sua excellen eccellenza Sergio Materella, Presidente della Repubblica Italiana, sua eccellenza signora Laura Boldrini, Presidente della Camera dei Deputati, sua eccellenza Pietro Grasso, Presidente del Senato, sua eccellenza Matteo Renzi, primo ministro della Repubblica Italiana, sua eccellenza Paolo Gentiloni, ministro degli affari esteri, stimati senatori e deputati, eccellenze membri del corpo diplomatico, signore e signori. È un onore per me essere qui oggi in questa ricorrenza propizia a celebrare il 60 anniversario dell'adesione dell'Italia alle Nazioni Unite. Signore e signori, ladies and gentlemen, buongiorno. I offer my <coughs> warmest congratulations on six decades of the Italy-UN partnership. Italian culture is prized around the world and in my home country too. Whenever I wear a tie uh, from Italy, made in Italy, my wife seems to love me more and better. <laughs> Last month in New York City, New York City was in a terrible traffic jam because of one small Italian car. The Fiat Cinquecento, the Papa Mobile. <laughs> the Cinquecento is gaining greater stature, like Italy, which is driving to a new a future. Italy has always been a bridge across cultures and continents. Uh, today, you have drawn on this experience uh, to forge a strong, courageous, and compassionate uh, response uh, to the biggest refugees and migration crisis since the end of the Second World War. I commend highly the men and women of Italy who have saved tens of thousands of lives. I thank Italy. <clears throat> I thank Italy for all it has done and all it has sacrificed. We can never forget that in 1961, 13 courageous Italian peacekeepers were brutally murdered in the Congo. We remember the scores of Italians who have lost their lives in the course of peace and stability. We thank the thousands of sons and daughters of Italy who have served under the blue helmet, blue flag of the United Nations over the years. Today, out of all the Western nations, Italy is the top two contributing countries to the United Nations peacekeeping operations. Italian support. <laughs> Italian support has been especially valuable for the United Nations mission in Lebanon. The fighting in Syria is putting intense pressure on Lebanon, and the United Nations is doing everything possible to respond with Italy's critical support. For decades, Rome has been a hub for the United Nations-led 
global fight against hunger as host of our major food agencies, FAO, funds and programs, WFP, and IFAD. Tomorrow, Italy continues this leadership with World Food Day at the Milan Expo. I look forward to attending myself and especially to interacting with young people working to end hunger. Rome is the birthplace of the International Criminal Court, and Italy is leading across the rule of law agenda, leading the world as expertise in dealing with transitional crime and other threats. From Brindisi to Turin, from Trieste to Florence, Italy is hosting many critical UN centers. And I thank you for your such a strong commitment for the United Nations cause and ideals. I welcome Italy's renewed commitment to foreign aid and its goal to become a top donor among G7 nations. Italy's backing for preventive diplomacy and conflict resolution, including through the community of Sant'Egidio, is also valuable. <laughs> this builds on Italy's advocacy for human rights to end capital punishment, promote religious freedom, and empower women. With appreciation and admiration, I ask you to do even much more at this critical time in history. Honorable members of the Senate and Chamber of Deputies, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the United Nations challenges and its potential impact have never been greater. We have just concluded one of the most intense high-level weeks ever in the United Nations. And I appreciate the Prime Minister and Foreign Minister's participation in this very important General Assembly. It began with a great honor of welcoming His Holiness Pope Francis. He delivered an impatient speech supporting the United Nations, which he said, I quote, can be the pledge of a secure and happy future, unquote. The same day, world leaders adopted Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development with a set of 17 Sustainable Development Goals. That is a vision of a life of dignity for all the people in the world. These 17 Sustainable Development Goals, known as SDGs, are our promise to uplift vulnerable and oppressed people everywhere, to empower women, to open opportunities for youth, to ensure equality for all people, to build peaceful and stable societies. We have a plan to end poverty, establish a peace, protect the planet, and achieve sustainable prosperity for all of us. I call on Italy to lead on this bold agenda for people, the planet, and prosperity, and peace through partnerships. Excellencies, distinguished members of the Chamber of Senate and Deputies, ladies and gentlemen, our agenda for sustainable development demands climate action. The recent paper encyclical Laudato, Laud, Laudato Si defined climate change as a moral issue and the principal challenge facing humanity. I welcome Italian government's intended nationally determined contribution known as INDC, submitted in the context of the European Union. Now I ask you to have even higher ambitions uh, for a low-carbon economy. Prime Minister Renzi has been active on this issue 
since he was mayor of Florence, and I thank for his leadership. <clears throat> Having served as mayor of Florence, he understands that we need local actions for global results. I thank Italy for pledging more than $344 million for the Green Climate Fund. It is important for, to follow through, especially before the Climate Change Conference in Paris in December. That will be an important milestone on the road to a sustainable uh, future. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot speak of a life of dignity for all people and ignore those who are fleeing threats. I thank again Prime Minister Renzi, the Italian government, and the country's citizens for their resources, energy, and empathy for the thousands of desperate people arriving here in search of safety. I saw the challenge for myself with the Prime Minister Renzi in April on board Italian naval ship San Giusto in Sicily. Two years ago, when hundreds of people died in the tragic shipwreck of the coast of Lampedusa, Italy established its Mare Nostrum operation. That saved some 150,000 lives. Since then, Since then, Italy has continued to lead European rescue efforts. These are urgently needed to stop the thousands of needless deaths that are turning the Mediterranean into a sea of tears. Some of the people who arrive meet the specific definition of refugees established more than a half century ago. Some flee grinding poverty violent discrimination, and other threats. When it comes to forced migration in the 21st century, there are not two kinds of people, one deserving or undeserving migrants. There are only... <clears throat> there are only members of our common human family who need protection, assistance, and support. We need to provide life-saving humanitarian assistance to those helpless people. Refugees do have special rights under international law, but all migrants must have human rights protection. History teaches us that both <clears throat> History teaches us that both migrants and refugees have great potential for foster progress in host countries. We see this in the many Italians who have gained citizenship abroad. Today, their descendants are now prominent politicians, entertainers, musicians, entrepreneurs. Excellencies, the war in Syria is the world's most humanitarian crisis. My special envoy, Senor Stefan De Mistra, a former Deputy Foreign Minister of Italy, is leading our efforts to forge a lasting political solution. We are also addressing the situation in Libya. I am calling on Libyan leaders to endorse the political agreement and move to realize the ambitions of the 2011 revolution. The gravest threat to peace is the rise of violent extremists across the Middle East, North Africa, and beyond. We must stop these atrocities, especially the attacks against women and girls. We must also end the destruction of cultural heritages. 
We have to preserve past civilizations as Italy has done so well to build a better future. The fighting will not end tomorrow, so we are rushing in relief aid. Billions of forcibly displaced people from Syria are being hosted by its neighbors, such as Lebanon, Jordan, Turkey, and Iraq, and some in Egypt and North Africa. Like those countries, Italy's shorelines makes it a frontline state for refugees from Middle East and Africa. I applaud the global solidarity shown by these countries in bearing more than their share of responsibility. At the same time, I stress the proximity does not equal final responsibility. All countries have the same duty no matter how close they are to a close crisis. <laughs> that is the point which I have been speaking out all the times to European countries after I have visited with the Prime Minister this Mediterranean Sea. I have seen how difficult challenges it was to have this search and rescue operations. This is true for Italy and Greece, as well as Kenya, Lebanon, Ethiopia, or Pakistan. Refugee resettlement is a global responsibility which must be shared fairly. Many understand this. I'm heartened by the outpouring of support we have seen in Italy, parts of Europe, and other regions. But I'm haunted by the families who face attacks, discrimination, and deprivation. And then rightly ask, they ask, where is the world? Where is the United Nations? Where is the humanity? When I was just six years old and the Korean War was raging, my family had to run from our village. We had nothing but mud in our shoes and hunger in our bodies, in our stomach. United Nations forces came to the rescue. I was too young to understand the term collective security, but I knew, even at that time, that there was United Nations who was supporting us, who were helping us. Even these days, we see so many tens of millions of people who need the United Nations help. The United Nations cannot do it alone. We need global solidarity and global support from countries like Italy. Here, I'm here today to thank you for your global solidarity and compassionate leadership. I know that global action yields common progress. That is why I presented a set of guiding principles to last month's high-level meeting on migration, which I convened at the United Nations. I call for saving lives, offering protection, and ensuring non-discrimination. I advocated strengthening preparedness, sharing responsibility, and boosting cooperation for practical solutions. And I stressed that we must manage migration while anticipating future challenges. This is a defining moment for Europe and the world. We should all be inspired by Italy's example and match it with the support. And I thank you for your leadership. <laughs> honorable, honorable members of the cha chambers of Senate and deputies, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, on this 60th anniversary of Italy's admission to the United Nations, I remember a man 
who worked hard for Italy's membership in the United Nations, but he never lived to see it. Before his death in 1954, the great Italian statesman, Alcide de Gasperi, He called, he devoted himself to promoting international cooperation. He called for countries to transcend national interest and, I quote, create new ways of living together for greater social justice. The model he felt was Italy, a country so richly diverse and strongly united. The inspiring masterpiece by Giulio Aristide Sortorio shows the struggle for Italy's unification and the stakes for all countries to join forces for common progress. Ladies and gentlemen, the United Nations is now celebrating, commemorating 70th anniversary, Italy 60th. We are very much conscious about the United Nations effectiveness and efficiencies and limit of how much we can do it. I am very much conscious, some criticism, but I believe that it is still the United Nations where all important treaties, conventions, and human rights declarations which guide the basic principles of our life have been made at the United Nations. It is the United Nations who are now taking care of 60 million refugees, daily services. It is the United Nations whose peacekeepers are trying to maintain peace and stability despite the very dangerous circumstances in many parts of the world. And it is still the United Nations who help many people, women and girls, who would otherwise needlessly die from preventable diseases. It is the United Nations who care, the seven billion people, and our planet Earth, so that everybody can live with dignity and human rights. United Nations, is now facing, like all the members of the United Nations member states, many crises, security and peace crisis, humanitarian crisis, the abuse of human rights. Not a single country, however powerful and resourceful may be, not a single organization, the most universal organization like United Nations cannot do it alone. I need global solidarity, global support. When we are united, when we have a global solidarity, when we have a compassion, compassionate leadership, I think we can overcome this one. I'm asking you all this solidarity. Lunga vita alla collaborazione tra l'Italia e le Nazioni Unite. Viva l'Italia! Grazie mille. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Grazie mille. Viva l'Italia! Thank you. Gentili signore e signori, la cerimonia è così conclusa.